probably my favorite wide release movie. I'm not saying blockbuster, I'm saying wide release because you guys are gonna crucify me. It's the Grand Budapest Hotel. This is a movie that is beautiful. It's so lovingly crafted on every level. Everyone turns in wonderful performances. It's so great to see Wes Anderson sort of find his groove again. Uh, when Wes Anderson is, is missing sort of the heart of his movies, they all feel like pale imitation knockoffs of himself. And this was probably my favorite Wes Anderson movie in a long time. And it's definitely my favorite because when I was looking back through all of 2014, that was one of the movies that I was like, I wanna watch that again, and then maybe one more time after that. It's got everything, it's got excitement, it's got romance, it has a prison break that, it, that is probably just the most fun. Look, if you don't like Wes Anderson, you're not gonna like this one, but I will say, if you want to like him, this is probably one of the most accessible since The Life Aquatic was uh, with Steve Zizou. These are both movies that uh, I think really open up instead of just focusing on quirky characters, he sort of builds this world and invites you to come into it. Somebody else talked about the Zero Theorem and Terry Gilliam and how every frame is a painting. That's exactly how I feel about this movie. It's just beautiful all the way through. You owe it to yourself to watch it. You don't have to like it, but, but watch a master filmmaker at the top of his game. Uh, probably my favorite indie movie of 2014, uh, and it's not technically an indie movie, but uh, it would have to be Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa. Now, this is probably a movie that you haven't seen and that you haven't heard of unless you're British. Uh, and that's because Alan Partridge is a very popular character created by Steve Coogan. Now, I love Steve Coogan. You may only know him from the Night at the, the Museum movies, which would be a real shame. Alan Partridge is the character he will be remembered for. It's had uh, a couple TV shows, and now finally, it's getting its movie. It may not be the funniest comedy, but it is definitely one of my favorites because, uh, like I said about the Grand Budapest Hotel, when I, when I went back and saw that on that list, I was like, I wanna watch this again. It has a number of terrific, uh, funny moments that uh, I enjoy talking with people about. It has some of the best lines. Uh, this is a movie that is set up to be a joke machine. It's pulling jokes out of its arsenal just as fast as it can, and sometimes you don't even have time to laugh at them before you realize you're in the middle of another joke. So it's definitely one that rewards uh, multiple viewings. There's not really anybody in this movie that you might know. If you don't know Steve Coogan, you may not know Cole Meany. He's terrifically funny here. The jokes abound. Not all of them will land for you, but there are some very funny moments that I think you will enjoy, and I do think that it is a better comedy than 22 Jump Street. So suck on that, cruise. 22 Jump Street was just 21 Jump Street with commentary. It's like watching the director's commentary of 21 Jump Street. That's right, I'll throw shade all over this motherfucker. None of us talked about Interstellar. Oh well, maybe next time, Christopher Nolan. It was a big swing, but it's nobody's favorite here. Follow us on Cinefix. Follow me on Twitter, Michael underscore truly. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in 2015.